So guys, it's your boy Dash again, back again with a new episode of the letter. Okay. Oh, I forgot my legit intro. So I'll do it again. Hi guys, this is Dash, dashing into you with this new video. I'll skip the introduction, I'll just start. Okay, is that okay? Hey, it's okay. Okay, I'll start. Okay. Um, a few visitors linger in the area, some merely enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through the stained glass windows. Others can't be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderly is gathered some way ways opposite of me, is occupied in a friendly banter about which one will cost more to buy. A little argument here, an occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right, I do need a break. Maybe this afternoon's hangout will help. Speaking of, I should call Ash. It's a few hours early from what I've done, but he did ask for a call once I'm done. Besides, I don't have a ride back. He offered me, so I might as well take it. She's taking advantage of that guy. Why, Rose, why? I mean, Isabella. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that he'll ever accept the letter. Personal convictions and all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable in him, despite his tendency to annoy the hell out of me, it's that. Well, whatever may works, a free ride is still a free ride. <sighs> Shut up, such a bad girl. There's Rose's offer too, but despite what she says, I know she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without me assisting. Bothering her for a favor as small as this is the last thing I want to do right now. Yeah. A call full of minutes and a few prayers asking for a decent signal later. The call finally connects and What's up, Bob Ash from Deluxe City? Baggers watch out, can't beat me. What the hell? Shit, how loud is this thing even? I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian A sharp ringing fills the entire hall, disrupting the pleasant quiet that has settled. Soon enough, heads begin to turn in search of the source mine included. My eyes dart around the small crowd before zeroing in a lone figure crouch behind the same group of old people checking out the Deckers moments ago. He is facing away from me fumbling with something in his hands. I don't need to see his face to know who's back at it. Oh, I'll recognize that damn parka anywhere. Without bothering to end the call, I march towards him. After what happened today, I'm really not in the mood to deal with this. Of all the times to- Ashton Frey! What happens next is something I should really regret later for not- For having not recorded- ah! He jumps- Whoa, what the- what the- what? Ah! Stressed me out. Okay, he jumps let out on a dignified yell, followed by his bones slipping out from his grip. It bounces from one hand to the other in his poor attempt to catch it, before ultimately falling flat on the floor with a resounding- <laughs> That's so bad. I'm so sorry. I kind of feel sorry for the phone and the floor. But it's not every day that you can catch someone like Ash off guard and get a reaction. Damn my stupid detective senses. I'll take every ounce of victory I can get no matter how small- HA! An awkward, an awkward pause passes between us. A blink. <clears throat> a cough. He makes a face. And then in a two quick motion he ducks and retrieves his abuse gadget. While the grin threatens to break out from my lips. He doesn't meet my eyes when he straightens, but the flush has grabbed up his neck and his neck and cheeks. In another universe where we haven't known each other for five years, and suffering through his teasing is not a day to, to the occurrence, chances are I'll find that adorable, endearing even. Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of world. The way things are, I'm already content to see him out of his normally collected disposition. Hello to you too, scaredy cats. I could stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. <laughs> what? And miss that look on your face? <laughs> no way! Oh man, I should have taken a picture. <laughs> I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. Talk to yourself! You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? For a moment, it looks like a cat that swallowed the cannery. Suddenly checking every nook and cranny in his phone for any damage or scratches seems to be a more interesting activity than explaining her himself. Ash? I could be looking to buy a house. <coughs> right? A mansion? Yeah, why not? Did you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. He's messing with me. Yeah, he is. Ashton, I am not in the mood. What are you doing here? He, he, he chances a glimpse at some point behind me. The parlor? 
curious, I follow his gaze, but before I can figure out what the scout is intended, he places a hand on my shoulder and turns me back to face him. I just on something earlier than expected, so I drop by. Okay, I still don't see how this work has anything to do with why he's here. At my confused look, he drops the hand resting on my arm, like he has touched something particularly hot and casually rubs the back of his neck. And I, uh, I said I'll see if I can pick you up. Turns out I can. Uh, free time and all. So here, here I am. Uh, figured you'd still be busy, and so I roamed around for a while. Ha! <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's flustered, though. should have though. mentioned that sooner. I was about to throw you out. Throw me? Hey, I was given a pamphlet. I think that makes me a legitimate client, at least. We have a mandatory <laughs> sign-in sheets for clients, Ash. I didn't see your name on it. <laughs> and you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normal people actually follow an etiquette here. Yep. Right, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and... No, wait. I wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said... <laughs> Never mind. I was just about to leave anyway. Wait, what? Now? Something must have shown in my face because he pauses and gives me a long, hard stare. Sometimes I forget how easy reading people is for Ash given how he often looks as if everything around him is a chore. I avoid his eyes hoping he'll drop the subject and won't ask any more questions. The last thing I want is to tell him what happened, especially the part about the letter. <laughs> in fact, he's the last person on earth I'll ever think about telling it to, if I can help it. Sure he's a dependable guy, God knows how many times he's helped me even without me asking for it. But stuff like goes in the supernatural. He'll never believe those even if he hears it from a friend, except maybe if it's Becca. Okay, on a good day, the most harmless thing he'll do is give you a detailed explanation why those things have no chance of ever being real. At worst, he's insufferable. He'll poke fun at you at every single chance he'll get. Asshole. <laughs> nice pun though. What did they ever do to him? He never does that to Becca or Zach. I can already imagine how things will go though at the moment I spill a word of what I saw in the attic. Nope, over my dead body. Before it catches his attention, I shove the letter still clasped in my hand, deep into my bag. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, let's just go. Doesn't look like a nothing to me. We still have Zack's movie tonight, remember? It's still early. And didn't you say your shift will end around 5 or 6? What about- Hey, Isabella, wait up! Oh, she, she went out. A rush of air greets me as soon as the main door opens. Not the usual autumn draft, but still a welcome change for the stifling atmosphere inside the mansion. Ash's footsteps are quick behind me, the soles of his shoes, something hard against the polished concrete and an upward cadence as he rushes to catch up. He calls out once, twice, the mansion still looms in the background, whispers calling me back, shadows beckoning. Oh my god! Whoa! I don't look back. We spend the ride back to Locksburn City in a relatively quiet manner with only the radio's disjointed home in the background fills the silence. Occasionally, Ash will reach out to fiddle with it until the signal settles or it, it's on a respectable volume, but otherwise it doesn't say anything. Neither do I. However, if the furtive glance has been sending my way is a sign, I know there's something has been itching to ask since we left the mansion. I keep my eyes strained on passing, passing scenery outside in small hope that my faint disinterest will dissuade him. Here. All of a sudden, it tosses something at me for a small compartment inside. It hit me completely. Before I can make a move to catch it, the small package makes a soap landing on my lap instead. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> the glare I send him wisely smirk out of the office space and he clears his throat, forcing his eyes on the road again. I swear he did that on purpose. Ignoring him, I flip the half forgotten package. I won't say no to free food, but why are you giving away cereal bars? I always have one on my person. And you look like you're about to pass out back there. <laughs> Have you eaten lunch yet? I don't even get a chance to deny it because right on cue my stomach rumbles loudly and an empty gnawing feeling in my belly becomes noticeable. No surprise there, I did skip breakfast lunch so I could catch Becca while she was on break. I was hoping to get a small meal after I... After, I guess with everything going on I just forgot until Ash mentioned it. It's like the hollow feelings new to me though. If anything, it's just one of the things I've gotten used to ignoring over the years growing up. Oh, that's so sad. A thanks, then I tear open the package and start nibbling at the edge of the bar. Apart from acknowledging Nod, Ash doesn't say anything after that small exchange. For that, I'm thankful. After getting an earful from both Becca and Rose, it's nice to be able to just sit down with someone who's not going to nag How'd the open house go? The usual. <coughs> we got a bigger crowd than normal because of the property's fame, but... 
Really, no different from the typical open house. On second thought, it actually looks like a fancy party more than an open house. I've never felt so underdressed in my life. Yep. Weren't you there? I wasn't really listening. I should have asked someone to kick you out. No, you won't. And what makes you so sure? One, ever since you got assigned to this property, you've been freaking out about it. Rebecca's words, not mine. Yep. She's been complaining to me about how you talked your ears off, by the way. Two, despite your initial qualms about the place, you still took the job. Which brings us to three. It's been months since you last settled a deal, and you're short on money right now since you're back to your instant noodle diet. How do you even know about the last one? Rebecca, anyhow, oh you're my God. bent on selling the mansion. Even if someone you know personally is in the tour group, you aren't going to just kick them out. Every single person who went on your open house is still a prospective client to you. Even me. He's not entirely wrong. Oh man, I walked right into that one, didn't I? Yeah, he got wrecked too. <laughs> I hate you. I really hate you right now. <laughs> His answer is a small laughter that the kind of screams, I'm right, I told you so. I hate it when it does I'll that. I'll have you know that there's already someone who's extremely interested in this property. So like even who? if you expressed any sort of interest in it, I don't think they'd be willing to let you have it. Too bad. Provided they didn't budget with the rights. Ma'am Hannah in particular didn't look pleased with what I did. I owe Rose a big apology. I hope she likes free donuts. <gasps> a free donut! You don't seem too happy about it. I am happy! Doesn't this look like a happy face to you? Yep. Really? And here I was thinking you found another one stuffed in the sofa. Or is it the wardrobe this time? He meant that as a joke, but how close it is. True to the truth made my blood run cold, my own heart with a heavy weight in my chest. All at once, the letter in my bag feels a whole lot heavier. Burdened by my own guilt and an yeah, well, things happened. Stuff the right couple might not be <coughs> pleased about. No need to make a fuss about it. It's normal in the business. It's normal in the business. Angry? Not angry. Just... stuff happened. Like? Things. Did they do anything? Your clients. The rights, was it? I can't answer that. Should I change the subject or should I lie to him? I can change the subject. You keep asking me about my work, yet you haven't said a single word about yours. Got him! Here, both you and Zack have literally disappeared off the face of the earth. I know by exaggeration, but changing subjects or something else still better than outright lying to him. Besides, it never works with him. Yep. Good decision though. I'm not sure if it's because I'm just bad at it or because he's just really very good at his job. He doesn't answer immediately. Only momentary shifting of glance over me and returning it back to the road when he has to make a sharp turn. Outside the sun has already started its descent, casting a vibrant orange glow on the tall buildings. I wonder how long before we reach the venue before Zack's film. Checking the street signs outside, it appears Ash has taken the longer route. Odd, but he's probably trying to avoid the rush or traffic. Didn't we just talk a week ago over chat? That's different. Linking your awful memes in the group chat box <laughs> every morning isn't exactly a conversation. Yep. Excuse me, I don't hear you calling them awful while you're laughing at all of them. Shut up! And you aren't answering my question. You got wrecked there, mate. <coughs> I did laugh at them, but I'm not going to give them the sad effect satisfaction of knowing that I find most of them funny. It only makes his head bigger. Stupid Ash. Call him another Ash Alright, alright. All right. Lay off on the abuse. Remember that case I mentioned before? We've been trying to pin the bastard down, but it required more work than we anticipated. The guy's slippery like that. We got some good lead months ago. He recounts what he's been doing the time we haven't seen each other. His usual work, the occasional small investigation in the big case he's been stuck working on. Stuff he couldn't mention in the brief time we catch each other online. Although most of it are the down version, only things he can tell. He has always been careful about that. Even the way he spins his answers to my questions, just enough to satisfy my curiosity, but not enough to paint the whole picture. At one point, his voice takes on a strange tone when he mentions something about the big case, but I don't dwell on it much. That's normal, right? I mean, we won't be frustrated if you can bring someone you're chasing to justice because they're slipping out of your they keep slipping out of your fingers. If I were in his shoes, I'll definitely lose my mind. Yeah, judging for Isabella's personality, she'll likely, likely lose her mind. His stories never ceases to be entertaining to me, regardless. If things were were the way they are back home, maybe I would have considered taking on the same job as him. Okay. Well, nope, not really. Mama will never allow that. <laughs> mama, she's called. She calls her mom, Mama. But the idea is still there. Along with gone, this other self let go. Time passes quickly between us in this manner. Between us 
in this manner. And before I knew it, we're already at the movie house. A small crowd is already deformed in the for front of the theater when Ash and I arrive. The Lift Fest, short for Luxbourne Independent Film and Theater Festival, attracts a bigger crowd than will in this year is no different. I've only been to a few in the film screening with Zach, so I'm not expert in the matter. But I know that for people hoping to make a break in the industry, getting their film recognized by a local event like this is already a big deal. Especially for a newcomer like Zach, he hasn't even won an award, but just getting a confirmation letter that the festival committee wants to include his movie in this year's lineup already put a grin on his face for weeks. Yeah, that's really good. Speaking of the guy, he's impossible to miss. At 6 feet, it appears to limp over the most of the moviegoers and with his large build and heavy voice, there's no surprise when people give him a white bird as they pass by. It's often easy to mistake him for someone in intimidating at first glance. I did, back when I didn't know any better. Ash did too, I heard, all once early in their friendship. Oh, hey, hey, you guys! Long time no see! Oh yeah, he's a really big guy though. Zack's face light up with a smile of his own. He moves towards us, taking careful steps and a significant effort to make himself smaller to, so as not to bump or accidentally hit anyone. Typical Zack. A senior's Ash casually raises his hand in greeting and. Sup, Z Man! My main man! What's crack a lacking, my homie? Oh my god. Our <laughs> desk that descends within the immediate vicinity of our small group is palpable enough. <laughs> Somewhere to our left, a girl giggles and on into I become a with my mouth hanging open. I'm also amazed how Ash can say that out loud with a straight face. Almost. Considering his tracker, I should be used to it by an assassin. Don't stop trying to act black, Ashton. And you're the only one who calls me Z Man. <laughs> There's fun this underneath this exasperated tone. If this were any other person, he'd likely be offended. But years of friendship and familiarity have made those words harmless to others' ears. Or at least enough for both to take it in this, right? <laughs> it's been a while, Zack. I hope you didn't get into trouble again. Not much to get into trouble lately without you, I'm afraid. I'll let you know if something comes up, though. <laughs> nah, I ended up with chicken down stuck on me last time I agreed. I'd really love at least this year to pass without some sort of accident happening again. Hey, I take offense to that. It wasn't that bad. You really have no idea. A beat passes and then Zach laughs. Hey, I'm kidding! You know you can always count on me. It's a story only the two of them are privy to every now and then Ash will enlist Zach's help on something. Becca and I have never really found out the real deal with those adventures, as Ash calls it, and both aren't willing to tell due to some unspoken agreement. She insists that if it's Ash, it's likely not something illegal or life threatening. Yeah, I tend to believe her on that. Sometimes. Ah oh, well, boys will be boys, I guess. I give Zack a small wave from behind Ash when he eventually turns his attention on. Bella! Huh? Rebecca's now with you. Is she still sick? A bit. But she's up and went to work this morning. You know she doesn't listen to anyone that's not Ash. Yep. Yes, she does. Oh no, my god. No, she doesn't. You're literally the only person she'll listen to when she's feeling stubborn. And it's true, they've known each other far longer than any of us in the group. So I do friends and all. But don't worry, Zach. She's probably on her way here now. She promised she wouldn't miss your movie. Isabella! <gasps> Speak of the devil. Oh yeah, there she is. Without warning, a hand grabs me by the shoulder and turns me around. Becca! You're just in time. I have to lean back a little with way, the way her face is almost invading my personal space, but she places her hand on either side of my face to keep my head still. She stares at me intently concerned, filling her eyes. Ugh, you're squishing my face. How oh. are you? Are you alright? Why wouldn't I be? Rose called me earlier. Oh, those four words tell me all I need to know. Since I don't have my family living close by and the other relative I have works on the far side of the country, I gave my company Becca's contact number in case of emergency. Okay, I should have known Rose will call her. I push Becca's hand away from me, although she lets go, her eyeballs remain drawn together. Oh no, no, everything's good. Rose covered for me at work today. That's not what I'm talking about. How's your head? <laughs> Beside me, Ash Snickers, I bite back the urge to elbow him in place of trying to avoid Becca's hand as she tries to reach out for the said area. I did my best to dodge her all at once, moving to hide behind Zack. <laughs> Sorry for using you as a human shield, Zack. Oh, 
Oh, it's nothing. I just slipped off a few steps on my way down. I blacked out for a few seconds and had a minor bump, but it's just that. You blacked <coughs> out? Uh, it's not something to brush off. Come on, at least let me check it. It's extremely minor. You wouldn't even know it's there. Isabella, this uh -huh. isn't a laughing matter. She did look pale when I saw her earlier. Yep. Wow, thanks a lot, Ashton, you traitor. I'll get you back for this. Just you wait. What? I'm just saying it as it is. <laughs> if you mentioned this earlier, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. Yep. I'm sorry. Saw her? Yeah, they arrived together. Bella looked fine to me then. I don't know. Something crosses Becca's face. But it's gone before I can figure out what it is. Oh, that's... that's good. At least she didn't have to travel alone, right? At least. Good. <laughs> See? I'm okay. I wouldn't be here if I wasn't. And... And I don't want to miss Zach's film. We can always watch it some other time. <sighs> Sorry, Zachary. No, it's good. But you guys should really keep it down. We're starting to attract some attention. Got him. The premiere. The premiere's different. Right, Zach? I showed him a pleading look. Zach's a sensible guy. He'll understand. He's understand. Not really. But Rebecca has a point. In the end, I think it's your call. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh. Please, Becca. I really don't want to miss it. You're not missing it. Oh, we're just moving it on a different day so we can have a medical professional take a look at you. Look, you guys. Ash just loud sigh and expected to cut through the conversation. He's pinching the bridge of his nose as he speaks something he usually does when he's getting impatient. If she says she's okay, then there's nothing we can do about it. It's not like we can stop her either. Besides, she's still acting like the same old Isabella to me. If she can still run around like that. Why are you taking her side? I'm not. But if she wants to watch Zack's movie with us, I'm not going to stop her. She's probably the one looking forward to it the most. Ash, that's... <sighs> you, of all people, should know... Tell you what, if I notice something amiss with her, I'll take her to the nearest hospital myself. Is that good enough for you? <gasps> ah, I'll get the Becca. I think I like Becca though. I always know the answer before Becca voices it out. When at last she releases a deep breath and nods. I'll be, I'll be, I don't know how to read that. With greater reluctance, I immediately tackle her, tackle her into her Thanks, home. Becca. It's always been you with him, isn't it? Did you say something? Me? Uh, nothing. Don't mind me. If you say so. Okay, guys, showtime's close, so I think oh, I'm she's gonna jealous get some snacks. Oh, my Watch God. You. And then let's head inside. Uh, anyone here has a smaller bill? I think I do. Hold on. I pull myself out from Becca to get my wallet from my bag and... What's this? It's already in your hush's hand before I can even react. Oh my god. No! Give it back! It's just a paper. I don't care! Give it! It looks ancient too. Why do you keep this around? I tried to reach for it but he holds the paper way above his head. I have never been particularly sensitive with my own height. But right now I really wish I had that advantage over him. Don't What's the big deal? It's not like it's a love letter. <coughs> I don't see any reason to- Hold on a second. This is, isn't it? Even if it is, it's not for you. Okay. Now I'm curious. I'm telling you it's nothing like that. It's- The rest of my words are lost when he unfolds the paper. I can't breathe. My heart feels stuck in my throat, pounding, threatening to burst out. Vaguely, I- Note how my hands are trembling at my side, clasping them together. Doesn't do any good. They are still shaking, but I hang on to it regardless. The awful sick weight has taken the score in my stomach, but it up in the in the open house returns full force. How do I fix this? How do I fix this? How do I fix this? Someone please. Today is turning out to be a horrible nightmare. Send this to five people or else. Well, that's... <laughs> um, guys, I think we should listen to Bella first. Aren't you a few days early for Halloween? Ash waves the paper in front of me, giving me a fleeting glimpse of its contents. I don't need to see. I don't want to see. The letters, the words, every stroke written in blood is already embedded in my mind. Maybe I should have shown it away when I had the chance that way. That way. It's not a prank. It makes all of them stop. Even I am surprised without steady my voices. What did you say? This isn't a prank! I saw something! Hold on. Are we still talking about this paper? Or is it about the urban legend again? Both. I know it sounds ridiculous. You're saying this is a primitive version of a chain letter. And now that we've seen it, we're now cursed. You've got to be kidding me. See? This is why I didn't want to tell 
tell you guys? Isabella, aren't you taking this a bit too far? It's not a joke! Will you guys listen to me first? I saw something in the house earlier. It stood right in front of me. If I hadn't gotten away, that thing might have... Right. And in broad daylight, Isabella. Typically, I don't believe in this stuff. But even someone gullible would find the logic in that screwed up. There's also no way in hell that this supernatural shit you're talking about is true. But it's real! What do you think I saw? Oh, her eyes do. A hallucination? A delusion? Didn't you say you fell down some stairs? So maybe Rebecca's right. It happened after, when I was trying to get away. I almost got stuck in the same room with that thing. We're all in danger. I thought you were my friends. Oh. Why don't you believe me? We are, and you know that. But this thing and that thing has got nothing to do with the other. When Rose called earlier, I thought she's just exaggerating. But the... uh, based on what I'm seeing right now, maybe it's better if we really postpone this for now. Oh Don't my bother. god. Without another way, it's not the letter of a... And stuff it back in my bag with more force than necessary. I'm tired. I got curious, so I'll go. Probably lost my sail. Got kicked out of the open house. I'm supposed to be hosting. My friends won't believe me, and all of them think I'm crazy. To top it all off, there's a dull ache at the back of my head, begging for a little attention. I can't afford to give right now. Honestly, there's only so much person can take within a single day. I just want to go home, curl up in my bed, and never think about today. But before I can take a single step away from Guys! the group. Guys. Zack rarely ever raises his voice when there's a point he wants to drive home. And hearing him takes on that tone to completely throw me off. Even Ashen Becca, whatever harsh words yet to come out from the argument, immediately dies out on her tongue. Why don't we all calm down first? I'm sure Isabella has her reasons too. No need to be hard on her. And hey, ain't this supposed to be a happy get together? We haven't seen each other for months. I I'd really love to know what y'all have been up to. I only ever get to talk to Bella over chat. Please. He has a point. Ash, for all his attempts to look cool in this time, has also been looking forward to this. He even took the time to call this morning for a reminder. He never does that. Becca, so I'm pretty sure that's another reason why she got out of bed today. Yet, despite Zack's attempt to lighten things up, or Ash's and Becca's questioning gestures, the tightness in my chest remains. I should have kept it to myself, or at least went with the idea that it's a prank. If I did, things might have turned out the way they did. No storm with no vibe. Bad vibes. Careless. So careless. Yeah, Isabella, you're so careless too. Stay for the movie. I, I'll be a good friend. Any other day, I'll excuse myself and go straight home. But this is something special to Zach. Something he worked so hard to bring to life. I should know better. I might be having be a bad, be having a bad day, but being with a few people I care about far outweighs the idea of spending the rest of the day throwing a tantrum alone in my room. And what if the thing in the attic follows me home? I don't want to be left with my thoughts either. I can still see it whenever I close my eyes. And maybe if I stay, let our health cool down first before telling them what happened. They'll listen to me. There's nothing you can solve with a calm head. One step at a time, Isabella. That's what Mama used to tell me. Besides, I don't have the heart to ditch Zack. I smile as a bag on my face when I look back at. If we keep arguing here, we're going to miss the first few minutes. All right, that's the Isabella I know. Oh, good. I thought for sure you were going to cry. <clears throat> this time I let this and an elbow straight to his stomach. Stupid Ash being vertically challenged has its perks too. What was that for? Stop <laughs> calling me a crybaby. I'm not one. Oh, don't cry. Stop it. Okay, scaredy cat then. That too. If you repeat that, I swear I'll. <sighs> Let's just go. <laughs> that another word, Becca goes inside. She doesn't even stop to wait for us when I call after her. Ash and I exchange looks at that. The same question, luckily, swimming inside our minds. Did something happen at school after I left? Is she having a bad day too? I'll try asking her about it later, so, I guess. So, uh, you guys go catch up with her. I'll go get us the food, I promise. But you'll miss it! Didn't you say watching a movie without food ain't fun? <laughs> it ain't like I haven't seen it. I made it, remember? I'll be in there soon. Okay, one friendly tap on my shoulder and then it's gone. A few moviegoers are still milling about, so I'm still waiting for for the tickets, but otherwise, most of the crowd are already inside. There's nothing more much for us to do here and now. Okay, let's go. Not a word of protest comes from me when Ash gesture for the two of us to hand inside. And then? Are you sure it wasn't one of the cleaning crews? Absolutely sure. Somehow I'll feature the movie. What happened in the mansion? 
Okay, so she's telling about it. Okay, I think that's 30 minutes. That's really long. Okay, so guys, I'll probably mm, continue in the next episode. Ah, that was really fun. I, the story is really interesting. It's taking a really weird turn of events for Isabella, but I think she'll probably get by in the next episodes. I I hope she'll get she'll get closer to her friends and especially Becca because I think she's jealous of Isabella <laughs> because I think she likes with the guy yes I forgot the name but the cool guy the cool guy it's Ash yeah it's Ash so that's it for this episode guys thank you for watching this is Dash dashing out